Hello, I'm Malcolm Gallagher, and welcome to BVTV Network, coming to you from the studios of BizVision in the UK. Daily, I read fearful news from around the world, from so many different sectors of people losing their jobs, having a reduced future, or having to seek a new direction. And that's at most stages in their career and most stages of age as well. It's causing untold stress, as if there isn't enough of that around. Here at BizVision, we're proud of our BizWise initiative to help you see alternatives and proud of our new Silverpreneur channel to support those aged 50 plus. But I'm no career guidance expert, but I know someone who is. So from leading executive search firm O'Connell Group, let's say hello to Chris Holmes. Hello, Chris. Hello, Malcolm. How are you? Oh, it, I, listen, where are you today? Because normally you're in, I would be chatting to you in St. Louis. Where are you? Today I am in Chicago, which is lovely. A lot cooler than it is in St. Louis. Is it always windy in that city? I think so. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Especially by the lake. Yeah. And I like that song, Meet Me in St. Louis. That's really good. I could have used that, but of course today you've just confounded my by being in Chicago. So, so I couldn't use that line, could I? <laughs> Never mind. I'd still respond. Yeah. Okay. Chris, this pandemic and the economic woes have affected every age in almost every sector, in almost every part of the world. In many cases, it's not just jobs lost, but also lives and businesses. I think we should all be playing our humane part to give guidance and help where possible. And so I'm delighted that you're joining me today on the BBTV network for our BizWise channel. And my theme for our chat is Wise Up to career change needs. Viewers and listeners, I'm talking to Chris in three parts across the Wise Up theme. First part, Chris is to give her thoughts on what I see as the mental block that people have when I, they either lose their job or have to make that career change. In part two, I want to ask her what preparation should people be doing to make a successful career change? And in part three, I want to ask her how they get in for an interview and ensure that they're seen as a good fit to their new employer. But first, Chris, can you briefly tell us who is Chris Holmes and, oh, and about your book, Ignite Your Career? I love the title, by the way, Ignite Your Career. But what does it aim to do for people, especially those I've just been talking about? Absolutely. Well, Malcolm, I'll first tell you about myself, then I'll tell you about the book if that works. Yeah. Um, so I work for a firm called the O'Connell Group, and we are an executive recruiting firm, been around for 27 years. It specializes in marketing and market research. Um, I'm a partner there, have been there over 25 years. Before that, I was in marketing for a decade. I went to Kellogg Business School. Um, but I fell into recruiting, just like the people you're talking about. My company was sold and I had to sit back and think, what do I want to do next? Do I want to keep going on the same career path? And truthfully, the job above mine made me anxious and sick to my stomach. It did not feel right. Mm. So it made me really assess what do I want to do? And I happened to call my favorite recruiter and say, get me a job in St. Louis where we wanted to live. And he threw out come work for me, which turned me upside down and made me really sit and think, what are the favorite parts of my job? What am I really good at? And that's what made me take my leap. So that is just a real quick overview of my background and who I am. My book, Ignite Your Career, really encapsulates the 25 years of experience that I've had at O'Connell Group and what I do with my candidates day in and day out how I counsel them strategically to figure out what their goals are, what their yeah. aspirations are, how to figure out their superpowers and where they should go and where they are in their career and what their goals should be, what, why culture fits so important and why it's always so critical to think long-term when you're making decisions. So you're making the right move for the right reason. And then once you know where you want to go, how to get there. So the mm. tactical pieces. So this book, while it's, you know, very appropriate for students and young professionals, it's also so relevant for anybody changing careers. Mm. It, 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 I call it a career Bible. Right. Yes. It, it is one stop shopping for everybody. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. I, I, I like that career Bible. Let's move into part one of my chat with you. Now, yeah. 
I've been made redundant in the past, once in the late 60s on Christmas Eve by a well-known USA toy company who were merciless to the whole UK sales team, except me. They took them two weeks to find me. Um, Mm -hmm. It's not pleasant and nobody saw it coming. Yeah. But many people suffered mentally at that time. And it, yeah. But I think more are suffering this time with the COVID pandemic. Uh, I say a mental block, but coming to terms with their loss should surely be a first priority. What's your thoughts here? I, I, and I agree. I mean, I think um, it is very fair to take time to mourn and, and to recognize that you're really sad. And, and you're hurt and you're mad and, and to kind of work through all those emotions because they're real. And, mm. and also to know and to reach out to people and to know you're not alone, that the world is going through this and is going through this. And if you look at people on LinkedIn and Facebook, if you put posts out there, you will see a lot of people commiserate with you and have been going through that. And, and there's a saying that misery loves miserable company yes. and knowing that you're not alone and other people have gone through it and can share their experiences takes a little bit of the sting away. So first I think you have to recognize it hurts. Hmm. And, and then I think taking a step back once you get through that and you can kind of see clearly to say, okay, um, that really was the pits and, and I wouldn't have wished that on me or my worst enemy, but it is what it is. So now I have to move forward and to really sit with yourself and think, how do I come out of this better? And one of the ways is tying into my first chapter, which is talking about your superpowers and figuring out your strengths. And I believe if you sit down and think in my job, what were the things that I loved doing? And write a list, just brainstorm, Malcolm, write them mm. all down. Yeah. What are the things I loved? And what are the things I hated? You know, that I never want to do again and brainstorm it and then put that list away and come back to it a couple of days later and take the top five out of each list and use that kind of as your North star, as you're looking forward, that that's at least going to give you a little bit of clarity on how to move forward. You know, I'm looking for jobs that have a lot more of the goods and a lot less of the bads. And that might at least give you a little bit of direction of how to go forward and where do you want to go? Mm. And it can almost pivot your life, can't you? Because, you know, last March, uh, prior to last March, I was driving 20,000 miles a year and flying all over, you know, talking about sales, marketing, leadership yeah. and that sort of thing and uh, where uh, to, to groups and that all over the world. And yeah. then suddenly that stopped. So we thought, what do I like doing? Well, you know, on all that time beforehand, I'd missed my two girls growing up because I was traveling. And now we've got four grandchildren. I don't want to miss them. So the motivation was to pivot to doing what we're doing, you and I today, today yeah. talking there. Yeah. But I can see that my, my grandchildren growing up, and actually they know my name. And, and that's beautiful. So you, you have found your superpower, which is connecting with people and, mm. and sharing information with a wide audience but still having this rich personal life that that's so important to you. Yeah. And I've got to say, I know it's an awful thing to say, but I have to thank the pandemic for that. Although I'd, I just have continued. And by the way, my uh, daughter that I didn't see grow up brought me a, a, a mug the other day. It says, I'm a dad. What's your superpower? <laughs> that's great. Yeah. But I, I do I, think, the, yeah. the pandemic has some silver linings. And I yeah. think that's mm. the other thing. It's like sitting back and saying, okay, what good has come out of this? Yeah. And what do I want to keep? What are the parts that even though there is so much bad and uncomfortable, mm. what are the good parts that actually were forced upon me that I don't want to lose? I think that's the other thing. Yeah. Uh, are your clients, um, many of them actually pivoting or do they want to replace like for like? Uh, so my clients, it's really interesting, um, in the world of marketing and consumer packaged goods, Mm. business during the pandemic boomed because people needed food and cleaning products and everything else. But my clients didn't need to market. 
because mm-hmm. people were going to the stores. So my clients s- streamline let go of people and, and truthfully the underperformers. Now what they're doing though, is they're rehiring because it's getting competitive again, yes. but they're looking for the future leaders. So their hurdle bar is way up here. Mm. And so hiring, you know, is challenging. They want yeah. the best of the best and it's very competitive. Those great candidates are getting multiple offers. Mm. So it is, it's interesting times in the marketplace in the world of recruiting. Yeah. And let me squeeze another little question. And then the, sure. those, those uh, clients who are looking for um, uh, a better client, a better candidate now there, yeah. are they looking for new skills such as uh, remote leadership, uh, agility, compassion? Yeah, they really are. So um, it's interesting. The leaders were born during the pandemic. And, and I think it's, you hit the nail on the head. The leaders that really stepped up and shown agility, show, showed that they can bring the team together, even though they were remote, mm-hmm. that they could onboard and teach people and keep them motivated and engaged and all those things. Um, and that they could lead through these really challenging, scary times. Those are the people who rose to the top. And yeah. there were other people who had been leaders who, who really froze. Mm. And, and so I think as companies are looking, especially for the very senior leaders, that is a skill they're looking for because who knows when the next pandemic or crisis is coming. And, and that is a skill that is going to be requested and looked for and, you know, evaluated as they move forward yeah. for all companies. Mm. Like it, it used valid. It used to be said that the only constant was, cha- was change. I think we can say the only constant is disruption now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who would have thought a year and a half ago we would mm. have just lived through what we lived through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I take very much of the point that you said about people up in their skills and everything, because um, since March 2020, uh, I've, I've interviewed over 500 CEOs, MDs, executives around the world uh, for our BBTV program, which is quite, quite a lot, you know? Um, Yeah. yeah, But um, when we started off, there were CEOs and MDs who couldn't possibly come on screen without a PA to the left and a technical person to the right. And were panicking about whether, you know, somebody could see that they had the wrong book on the shelf. Yeah. And, you know, and, and they were so cold and so, um, uh, the uh, lack of lack of warmth to their people that you yeah. could almost feel that they were going to be the ones that would drop off the edge. Yeah, and then the yeah. new a new a new a new breed emerged, you know, towards the end of 2020, who were happy that you could see that their child was running past, the dog was barking, you know, <laughs> or or in one case, his wife came down the staircase behind him in a see-through black negligee, but we'll never talk <laughs> about that one, will we? Well, it's funny, this morning I woke up, you will appreciate this, and my microphone all of a sudden was not working. So I had to call my tech folks and my husband and I are here and he opens the door and I'm like, honey, I am on Zoom. Make sure you have clothes on. (laughs) (laughs) And the door closes. I'm like, just, uh, it's like a whole new world. Yeah. Well, it's true. I had a CEO of a not-for-profit company talking to me from her bedroom one day, uh, one evening, and her husband walked in naked. But let's move on, (laughs) should we? Before before. But before we move to part two, let me yeah. just remind everyone of your, actually, that, that was a lovely little conver- side conversation, by the way, talking how life has changed. But let me just yes. remind everyone of your URL, your website uh, for your book, which is obviously, re, uh, you know, viewers, you can see on the screen behind me, but we've got listeners as well. It's Ignite, Ignite Your Career Book, igniteyourcareerbook.com. And the company website is O'Connell. There's no little apostrophe between O and Connell. It's O'ConnellGroup.com. That's a good Irish name like Gallagher. Viewers can see it on the screen again behind me, but let me just spell all of that out for listeners. IgniteYourCareerBook.com and go and have a look at O'ConnellGroup.com. Right. And Malcolm, one thing I will tell you is you can get the book there as well as we ah. offer services like resume writing, interview prep, negotiation, and coaching. 
at that site, yeah. which is, you know, the same thing we offer our candidates. So yeah. it's a great site. And, and, you know, don't use your old resume that you had three, four years ago, I think is important, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Very true. Yeah. Right. Part two, we've wised up to the need to move forward. I now want to ask you, what preparation should people be doing now to make a successful career change? All right. So we talked in phase one about figuring out your superpowers, figuring out kind of where you want to go. I think the other thing that's really important is if you're going to transition to a new field is recognizing your skills that can transfer over. So, you know, the things that you have done, project management, analysis, leadership, all those things, you're not starting from ground zero. So making sure you understand what those are, but then the key is writing a world-class resume. And a resume should be clean, it should be clear, it should be really easy for somebody to read, to see, who you are, what you've done, how you've progressed, what your responsibilities have done and what you've delivered. Those results are so critical because they say you've done it and you've done it well. And if you're trying to shift from one career to another, you really need to bridge for them. You know, you need to really bridge and show how your responsibilities can move from one area to another. So it's important to have a stellar resume. And that's why working with somebody, especially when you're moving from one career to another is so critical. The other thing I would tell you is, I am not a fan of applying online. It Mm. is like going to a black hole. It, it, you know, never to be seen from again. So if, if that is the only way you can apply, make sure you look at the job description and the keywords, and if you've done those things, put as many in your resume as possible because companies use artificial intelligence and that will help you rise to the top so a human can look at your resume. But I believe much more in networking. So mm-hmm. via LinkedIn and people you've worked with in the past, who do you know that might be able to deliver your resume to somebody? You always should have a couple great recruiters in your corner that you can talk to, get advice, see if they know senior leaders at the companies you're interested in where they can get your resume in. Or friends and family or people from your high school or college, that's the other way that are in your industry. So networking, all those different ways before you apply online is a much better odds and chances of success applying, but none of it will work if you don't have a powerful resume. Excellent. And this might cross over into my final question, but I I really want to use your terrific experience here. You know, we were talking about there about what you've done, but surely companies today are looking also for who you are. Yes. And, And who you are comes through much more, I think, in the actual interview. Mm. And and I am a huge believer in doing a lot of interview prep Mm -hmm. and getting to know yourself intimately. In my book, there is a long chapter on interview prep, and it gives you the steps to get to know yourself intimately, to do your homework on yourself, to do your homework on the company and differentiate yourself so that you can score. But I agree, Malcolm. It's and, and I have a saying, you have to woo and wow. The wooing yeah. is connecting with whoever mm-hmm. you're talking to so that they walk away saying, Malcolm is great. Not only, you know, do I like him, but man, I'd love to go have a beer with him. Mm-hmm. You know, I, he just fits and I would love to work with him. The wowing piece is Malcolm is great. And I think he could deliver great results on my team. Mm-hmm. If you don't woo and wow, you won't get the job. Mm-hmm. So you have to do the one-two punch. Yeah. And I can do lots of wowing today because it really stands for Wicked on Wednesday. And you know what day we're in having this interview? <laughs> now, look, my final part, Chris, is to hopefully yeah. get some getting the job secrets from you. And after all those years, you've got lots and lots of little secrets and we need to bring them out. Uh, and don't forget, everybody, 
igniteyourcareerbook.com, igniteyourcareerbook.com. I, I think companies, as I was saying before, have had their own big change in recruitment as a result of the pandemic. I think they're seeking people with some additional, and I hate the phrase soft skills, but soft skills such as consciousness, and want that to be evidenced. Um, I, hopefully I'm right, but how do you do it? How should people go about getting the job in this new and altered world? So uh, there are a couple different ways, and I, I, I don't disagree with you. So one is, you know, on your LinkedIn profile at the very mm. bottom, there are recommendations. Right. Ask people to write recommendations that you've worked with in the past, because if you look at mine, I have over 60 and it takes the risk out of it, especially if people talk to your capabilities and how much they love working with you. Potential clients read that and say, oh, this person's really good and people love working with them. All of a sudden, that's not a question. The other thing is, as I was talking about networking, if somebody within the company advocates for you, says, I used to work with Malcolm and man, he's a great guy and he would fit with the company. That endorsement is huge and yes. will get you a day in court. It's not going to get you the job. You mm. still have to deliver, but it will get you a day in court where you're going to get a chance to interview. So those things are huge. And I think key to differentiating yourself versus just a cold resume that they're looking at where they really don't know anything about the person. Hmm. Um, I, I, do you think we've yet moved towards having video testimonials, you know, uh, of, of any power or are they considered a bit glib? I think it's interesting because I'm about to test a video, um, a video technology uh, where I'm going to be interviewing my candidates instead of writing them up. So we'll see. I think, I think it's going to depend on the person's capability to mm -hmm. come across as human versus salesy. Right. So I, I think it'll be dependent on the individual, whether they'll be impactful. Mm, yeah. I, I was thinking of the um, testimonial, you know, from, uh, uh, should we say, a former employer. Uh, that could do it. Yes. Yeah. Um, or if you have, you know, somebody who knows somebody mm. who writes a note to mm. the VP at a company saying, hey, I know Joe's sent his resume and he used to work for me. These are the reasons I think you should talk to him. That's mm -hmm. huge, too. So any of those things where somebody who somebody trusts endorsed you, endorses you, that's that's big. OK, just um, remind us what we can get the O'Connell Group dot com. Um, O'Connell Group dot com. If you are in marketing or consumer insights, we're the place you want to go. Right. Great resource for that. If you want help with your career guidance um, or resume writing, interview prep, negotiation, you want to go to Ignite Your Career Book dot com. Independent of the industry, we've helped people from in college, all the way to chief marketing officers looking for jobs. It doesn't matter where you are in your career or what industry you're in, we can help you get on the right path and would love to. Mm. Uh, I think, Chris, this is such an important uh, discussion we have that we'll have to do this again sometime, but can we meet in sure. St. Louis next time? Uh, please. Um, I'll, start, I'll start practicing. I can't sing. You know, but um, <laughs> uh, and and the other the other day I was interviewing a, a multimillionaire and his his uncle um, was Bing Crosby. So maybe I can maybe oh. I'll get some mix. Yeah, look, nobody wants to lose their job, especially one they love. Nobody right. wants a career change forced upon them. But we live in uncertain times and challenging times. I trust my interview with the author of Ignite Your Career and partner of O'Connell Group. Chris Holmes has given you the right motivation and inspiration for your future. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Malcolm.